artists and creators tend to get a bad rep. Ask anyone outside our own immediate circles. Often we're considered lazy, awkward, and even broke, and the, the list could go on. Personally, I'd rather not fall into the category of some deeply troubled, romanticized loser. Now, as a bit of an aging creative myself that has not completely effed up my own life or my kids yet, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of tips that I've picked up along the way to help you avoid becoming a deranged hermit. And if you do, I'm totally not judging here. So most of the stereotypes I'm going to be going over today revolve around commerce, our social skills, and our own personal habits. I think we really need to address all of these stereotypes if we're going to thrive in today's market as a creator. So if you're new here, I'm Tyler Edlin. I've been a professional artist, illustrator, and instructor now for over 12 years. And today I'm going to share these tips to hopefully help you guys. If not, you can always come along and enjoy the painting. So let's go. All right, so number one on today's agenda, the starving artist, right? The most common stereotype there is out there about us. As the name implies, this stereotype suggests that we are just perpetually struggling financially. And if you caught the last video, of course you'll see this is something that I had to deal with much younger in my life. And, I've, and of course it did take me 20 years to pay off my college debt every month survive that and now that I have kids in daycare and paying a lot of freelancers to help me out right the bills just keep stacking and stacking but I'd say I'm not starving in any kind of sense of the word nowadays especially since I have very high protein goals and food standards to keep myself you know physically tuned so what do we have to do as creators so that we can surpass barely making ends meet and how can we prove to people that an art career is practical and that it doesn't always lead right into poverty. I think the big first takeaway is just simply understanding your market, right? Like what do you want to do as a creator? Do you want to be an independent creator? Do you want to be an independent creator that is working on illustration, some kind of craft like like textiles or, or prints? Or do you want to be an independent creator that focuses on illustration and go into like a self-publishing route? Or would you like to be an independent creator that runs your own firm, whether that's for design, whether that's for like concept art and visual development? There's a lot of options, right? But it's kind of having a little bit of a plan in that is, is a surefire way to help keep your focus and priority straight. The other way to do it is, again, it's just as shaky as any, is going into an actual... Uh, business, right? Going into a company or a corporation, being, you know, an on-staff artist. These jobs are great because they do supply benefits, they provide steady income like any kind of nine to five, and they provide a wealth of networking opportunities and, and other bonuses. Unfortunately, like any job, and considering it's 2024, the market is extremely unstable and we're going through a bit of a recession. So I think that would, the, I think while that's great and it, and it in theory is an awesome uh, trajectory to have, I think ultimately building your own sort of quality brand would be the ideal way to approach it, at least from a very kind of passive standpoint, right? Like you could work some other sort of job, like I used to work uh, as a school bus driver, I worked in warehouses, I've worked as a delivery driver. I like driving a lot in some regards, but I was always working off hours on my own brand. I was working on myself and on my skill and my craft, something I'm not stopping you know, up to this very day doing. If you're not sure what brand is, you could think of it as your own kind of business reputation. Brands are built in the hearts and the minds of the people. It's how people are forming kind of opinions about you, right? When you think of Walmart, Oh, that's the cheap brand, right? Because you can get there and get anything at a very low cost. But I didn't want to have a reputation or a brand for just being cheap, right? So I try to focus on quality and having a reputation for delivering. So something that we can all do as creatives is just following through our word and delivering on our own promises, whether that we're making a public statement like, hey, I'm going to do four studies this week, 
or I'm going to tell a roommate or a family member or a spouse that I'm going to work on one personal project per week, right? And, and just following through, that'll start to build your reputation, which will establish your brand. And as small of a circle as that may be, it can eventually kind of grow. So another big thing that I do to avoid landing in total poverty here is, of course, network. I always am networking, whether that's on Facebook, whether that's on LinkedIn, whether that's communicating with you guys in the comments here on YouTube. I love when you guys leave me comments. I read every single one. Or whether that's you know going back and forth with you guys on Instagram, another platform that I'm constantly engaging with, right? I don't engage with every platform. I think that's much too much for any of us, but you know, just pick one or two, maybe three platforms and, you know, kind of tend to it, right? We're planting seeds and, and building and maintaining relationships. You know, some of them are very big clients. They all came from people I know, people that passing work down, you know, the, the chain, like, hey, sending out feelers to people that they know could handle the job. This doesn't happen if you're not putting yourself out there and making face, right, with the community. So the next stereotype I want to address today in today's video is the eccentric and the bo bohemian kind of lifestyle creative. Again, often enough we're stereotyped as like these hermits that kind of live a little outside of society or, or live in very kind of weird sort of standards. And our lives are marked by instability, unpredictably, and a, a general lack of responsibility. And I think, you know, looking back, certainly that has been me in stages of my life, but I'm in a new season, you know, and I'm a homeowner, and I run a business, and I maintain a family. It, and it's a lot. And this is simply not an option for me anymore. I don't think being in that sort of stereotype has ever led me to becoming a better creative. I think becoming a better creative has always been a result of me constantly consuming information and, and taking in anything I can, whether it's just visually looking at reference pictures, whether it's reading a book, or whether it's traveling with my uh, family, getting some general life experience. These things all lead to inputs that I can output as you know some kind of creative venue. I think if you just take a trip to Negative Town as a creator and then start having pity parties for yourself every day, you're going to get yourself in a rut. Genuine, sustainable creativity is just not going to be born in that habit. It's not going to be born in that situation. It hasn't been from my experience. Like when you when a client hires you and you have to show up, you know, every day and deliver, you just can't say, "Well, I'm kind of having a bit of an off day. I'm not going to provide you like with the worksheet and with like the 13 designs you were expecting." Right? You you just can't do that. So a good way you can avoid, of course, all of this is to set your own goals and prioritize, right? Keep lists, build, uh, you know, a note system that works for you. Notion out there is really great. I know a lot of creators use that. Maybe it's just a set of Google Docs. Heck, our smartphones are built with lists. Hey, this has got my kind of kids making funny faces on it. But here, our smartphones are built to have with a lot of note systems and apps to help us organize our lives. And I think the more, if it's anything I've learned, if you, again, if you guys got that last video, a large part of my life was very or, unorganized. And I could have excelled at much greater paces had I kept track of things better, had I planned and organized things better from the big to the small, whether it's the day to day to having, you know, like a, a, a four month plan or having a, a plan for one year away. I don't necessarily plan that far away, but yeah, I like more monthly and weekly goals. And when once you organize and compartmentalize your life, as you can really evaluate things. So that's what we're doing, right? We're analytically looking at what's working and what's not working. We can make much better conscious decisions as to like what are potential opportunities for us and what are potential waste of times. Which leads me to the second point on this, which is simply just diversifying your income stream. It took me just two years into this field. Way back in 2010, I had I had my first real creative gig with really consistent income. I was getting, you know, more money that I could spend at the time. It was just as astronomical for that point in my life. 
and it was something I could rely on, and I got really comfy, and I got really cozy for those two years, and then in the blink of an eye, they're like, well, we're just not going to renew your contract. They didn't really give me a reason. I, I think the work was drying up a little bit with them, and it just stopped, you know, in the blink of the eye. No kind of real warning, no, no loyalty, there's no nothing, and, and that's how it is no matter how big of a studio right you're potentially working for it's i learned very fast it's a very unstable field luckily of course at the time being in my 20s i knew that like i i could bounce back i could i could think of something and of course i didn't have a mortgage and i didn't have kids so that was great but i knew i wanted that in the future so i'm like i got to diversify you know and that's when it's like okay let me just get on youtube we'll have fun i'll start building up a, rep a reputation and a brand here that eventually led to teaching, which led to other kind of opportunities, which to, it just started. It, it started that snowball and it compounded into many more income streams in, in various ways. Uh, so again, it was one of the best choices I had ever did. And I'm still looking for ways to diversify that and create different avenues for income as well. So moral of the story, don't just put all your eggs right in one basket because chances are, things will things will break and crash and you're going to need to readjust right realign and organize again so another big thing that you guys can do to avoid the stereotype of course is to seek feedback and accountability don't be shy about it but a great way to do this is to join art communities again it's going to help you network it's going to help you collaborate and it's going to help you in feedback find a tribe right find whether it's a discord you know link below i got one there i discords and patreons there, there's all kinds of communities out there there's facebook groups for artists i think linkedin does groups too i'm, I'm kind of catching up with them but there's there's ways to really connect with very similar people and this is this is going to really elevate you in every possible way as a creative and of course it's going to help you from like avoiding at least three or four of these terrible artist stereotypes too Generally, as people, if we can have an accountability, we can absolutely deliver way more consistently. All right, so the third stereotype I wanted to come over today is our socially isolated or uh, introverted, right? Artists are. I have went to a conventional kind of fine arts school. I saw it firsthand. Uh, everybody wanted to be individuals. Everyone kind of had like their gimmick or their theme. I don't even know what to call it. I kind of just showed up as like a regular dude in a in a collar shirt and I stood out as like just like an incidental because I, I wasn't trying to do express myself creatively with like how I dressed and like just like lifestyle choices. I kind of just came I stood out as like a normal person. It was it was kind of funny looking at it in hindsight. But right, I'm isolated to a degree and I have been my entire career because I work out of this office in my basement most of the time. Like I get in calls and stuff every day, but I'm not in an office setting and I haven't been, you know, for like 12-ish kind of years now. So like, yeah, I'm sure it's paid, paid its toll on me socially in some ways, but I'm, I'm introverted. I rather just kind of keep to myself. I'm perfectly happy here. I always do get a little anxiety starting any capacity of a conversation with anybody. So I do feel that stereotype. But again, I've done a lot of things to actively make myself more comfortable in these scenarios. Something like as simple as just getting in front of the camera like this took a lot of courage. And it's something that I'm never fully comfortable with doing. And like I mentioned before, just joining our communities, commenting on others' work, right? Helping and sharing other work is another one too. Like just, I try to make a point at least a few times a week to share someone's work I like on a social platform, whether that's in a story, whether that's in the form of a reel or just reposting it on Twitter or Facebook. Sharing others' work is a really great way. And especially too, if they're open or if they see, the creator sees that, then they're like, yeah, they'll thank you. I mean, I think people that, that share some of my stuff as well, it's it's a great way to start conversations and build relationships. And for my like last little tidbit here that can help, of course, is just to participate in anything, whether that's in a group discussion and a topic, whether that's showing in weekly hangouts in any kind of community. Every community has got some kind of hangouts where they get online and they do drawing jams and art jams. You don't have to necessarily go to coffee shops and bars anymore to do this. Right, we can do this as creators online and it's a lot more comfortable of a segue, right, for us to kind of get into those more public kind of communities and spaces. 
So definitely just participate. Maybe it's an art challenge or a contest or a, a monthly art theme where you're you know posting with a group of people, right? A number of different topics in art, right? There's a lot of ways to do this. All right, for the fourth artist stereotype I want to address head on today is that we are lazy and ambitious. And in reality, at least for me and many of the people that I interact with online, it is completely the opposite, right? We are a savage group of people when it comes to ambition and goals and what we want to do and achieve on the day to day and on the week to week. And I'm, it's not about outworking the other person. It's about doing the best for yourself. Maybe there's people out there that aren't creatives that just don't understand us and they just think we want to make pictures or color for a living because it doesn't require hard work or dedication, but you guys know, right? I'm preaching to the choir here, is <laughs> that the, this this kind of field requires, if anything, more dedication to hard work than most other fields. And that in fact, that this stereotype totally does not undermine, you know, skill, effort, and and the passion, right? That, that kind of goes into art. But if you do find yourself some days unambitious or lazy, do what I do. Get a big high dose of discipline and chug it every day so you never run out, right? Establish a routine. Use that routine to build that discipline. I have often heard, and it's something I do preach you know, to, to my students and to my kids, we don't raise to the level of our goals, but we will sink to the level of our systems, right? So put whatever system, whatever routine you need to in place for me right now, when I'm in term teaching classes at CGMA, shameless self plug, my time during class sessions is on an all time low. Like every bit of extra pockets of time that I normally would have, right? Goes to helping students, it goes to doing feedbacks, it goes to planning curriculums. Of course, happens to me intermittently throughout the year. So during these times, I make a point and a habit to get up every day at 5 a.m. so I get an extra two-ish kind of hours added on to my day. Whether I wanna use that to bang out those feedbacks or to go to the gym and, and pump myself up, it's all good and it's all beneficial either way. But no one is ever gonna give you discipline. And no, unfortunately, it doesn't come in a jug that you can just chug like my endless supply of energy drinks that I do have to do to maintain <laughs> some of this work, but you, you build it through habits and it, it is a very obtainable, you, you know, it takes about two weeks of doing anything routinely to make it a habit, make good habits, make these habits your system. Nobody else will ever do this for you. You have to take initiative and do that for yourself, minimum. So aside from establishing uh, routines and disciplines, another great thing that you guys could do is professional development. My wife's a teacher. She teaches elementary schools and they have professional development days. I don't know why I'm saying it like that, but it's funny because the way she describes it is like they just, the teachers get together and they kind of work and they kind of plan their curriculums and stuff and then work on their systems, you know, make themselves better educators. But for me, maybe for many of you guys, maybe that's developing a new skill. Maybe that's picking up that 3D software that uh, you've been meaning to but have not had a chance yet. Maybe, maybe that's just grabbing the next tutorial that you've been wanting to do to learn a, you know, a, a new skill or, or help yourself with color or light. Or maybe it's just finishing a tutorial you bought. If you're like me and just buy loads of tutorials, I love doing that. And they get a little backlogged, you know, just going through it and then actually following through. You could just sketch for 30 days, for example. and you could just learn that perspective and really grind that in. You could get Scott Robertson's gruelingly tough, difficult to read uh, perspective book. But one thing you could do, you know, is just simply make a line in a notepad or something like what is one thing you want to work on each week and just dedicate five minutes a day to it. And of course you could just marginally increase that time over time if you really finding yourself enjoying it and want to get into a more focused state with it. And lastly, you know, if you find yourself lazy or unambitious, take care of your well-being, please, right? Get some sun, read a book, take a little bit of time to watch a movie, take a little bit of time, right, to watch a movie or, or to play a game. But if you're 
only trying to do art or something creative for like a half an hour and then you're building up an excuse where you're frustrated and then you go and play Baldur's Gate 3 or or something else for like three hours or three days, then that's the problem, right? Like, I absolutely endorse myself and anyone out there that needs to take a break and to step away from the desk, to step away from the work. That's how you can get unstuck in many ways. Just don't do it for an extended period of time because then you're just building another bad habit. And of course, physically taking care of yourself, that goes without say. You don't want to get blood clots like my poor friend Jessica who was grinding out art like 8 to 12 hours a day and was sitting way too much and got serious health conditions. Don't do that. Get up, stretch, set timers. Right? You guys can set timers on anything. Just do some up and down squats. Get down, do a couple push-ups. Whatever you can do. Just do laps around your living space. Anything will help. So my last big stereotype that I want to address today is the unreliableness or the flakiness. Like us artists are flaky and that we're failing to meet deadlines and that we have to do our own thing all the time and we lack commitment to anything, right? And, and we, I think we all go there. I'm not saying I'm above any of these things and I'm not saying I'm invincible to any of these things. These things do come and they hit me in all various ways and I know that they're going to probably hit you guys too. If we get our systems and, and build good habits and take care of ourselves, we can avoid a lot of this. So one thing that I'm definitely getting better at and even, you know, that I'm still working on well into my business is is financial planning. You know, now I'm, I'm saving money, you know, toward retirement. I'm, I'm investing and in, in getting into Roth IRAs. I'm, I'm putting money away for my kids. I'm saving and planning for the future. So even though like last week I got let off on my latest contract position, something that I've more or less had in some way or another steady going for almost the last three or four years. That's an income stream I'm down currently. But like, thank God I was responsible with my money for a little bit, because even if nothing comes knocking on my door for the next couple years, I'm going to be financially okay. So even if the money is, is doing really good and you want to spend it and spend it all, just, just save it and plan it. If you have to get like a CPA or an accountant, anybody to kind of help you manage money, just do it. Because I'm uh, I, I'm guilty, right? I'm, I'm an artist and I've not always been good with money and, and financial planning, but it's something I'm actively trying to get better at. And another great thing that I do teach in a lot of my classes all the time is uh, improving our communication skills, which for a lot of us, it is a little difficult. I don't know why as, as creatives, but... It is hard sometimes to communicate. So because I you know, work largely with design, good design is all about communication. So in that regard, at least, I've been trying to improve my communication both socially and with the artwork and the designs that I come up with. So whether that's just clearly laying out your pages and your submissions for a client, and whether that's just managing expectations up front with a client. Hey, look, here's the deadline. This is what's going to be due. These are the three phases I'm going to deliver you work in. I want half up front. Let's deliver half on deliver when the final is delivered, right? Just managing everything and being really transparent with prospective clients and even each other is a really great way to focus and build this skill. Like I'm, I'm going to make sure because I failed at this in the past when like I submit a sketch to a client that they don't interpret that as a final. And I don't know why, but a lot of clients maybe that don't have a lot of experience working with artists and that they don't understand the difference between a work in progress and a final and then they get really nervous and, and shaky and, and some of them even just, they'll ghost you. They'll disappear. They're like, I was hiring this dude for, for a pro job and I just got like a sketch. It's like, dude, no, dude we're on phase one. Man, like, why are you, why are you freaking out? Uh, because it's not up to your standards. Like, we're just getting this, the ball started, right? And it feels like no matter how many times I've communicated that with some people, they still don't get it. So that's why I make visuals and diagrams for everything. At this phase, it's going to look like this. We'll get that approved, right? And it's something I've gotten better with, you know, over time. So that they know what they're going to get, when they're going to get it, and the purpose that is going to fulfill, right? Managing expectations. So my last little tip for this video and, and for this category is just focusing on smaller tasks in general if you find yourself a little more flaky, right? Like don't set yourself up with this big four-month personal project where you're going to develop and world build all this crazy stuff. No, nah, no, nah, just put all that away. 
Just do something a lot simpler, a lot smaller in scope. Build your confidence up with that. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys for watching. For those who have stayed through to the end, uh, I do, of course, offer different courses, uh, mentorships, both one-on-one -on -one and groups. All information is below. And I'll catch you guys next time. All right. P peace.